both. And that if you ignore the or and go for the and and the all. <laughs> Translate that! <laughs> I'd like to ask you what your embryonic films were. What were your first, earliest forms of narrative? Because mine, this goes back to the Middle Earth statement. I, 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 my my favourite part of Middle Earth wasn't actually the book itself, which, uh, while Tolkien's imaginative powers are un undeniable, as a writer, he can be a little bit creepy. Uh, <laughs> Tom Bombadil, has of the Healing, had yeah. two principal antagonists called Sauron and Saruman. Same name, what are you thinking? <laughs> Don't get me started on Tolkien, but, 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 the only decent female character in the whole thing is a giant spider who dies under highly Freudian circumstances as well, that, that, that also really gets me, but, um, but, I love the maps, it's all about the maps for me, the maps at the end of The Return of the King, and so my, 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 em, my proto-embryo novels were big, big sheets of wallpaper, length of the stage, and I'd draw imaginary lands and archipelagos. Is it archipelagos or, archi or archipelagos? I never know, and it both sounds wrong. No, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Like, pedagogy, pedagogy, they both sound wrong. Tomato, um, tomato. Uh, I drew these, these islands and these kingdoms and these empires, and those are my first narratives because you have to think about who lives there and, who, and what the people are and then immediately into sociology and, and anthropology and politics and world making and economics, anything like that with films. This uh, is where it gets really analysis. dark and very uh, an, uh, sort of um, the, the analyst comes out because we begin to confess that we were both D&D nerds. <laughs> There's a lot of us out there. Uh, the key to success, get your kids playing D&D &D right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, well, um, uh, uh, yeah, I was going to be a writer first, and the filmmaking was sort of sep secondary to the writing, and uh, I, I loved cinema, and, you know, so I, I just sort of kind of... Um, I don't know exactly how it happened, but I think because it was me and my sibling, and we were like, huh, what are we going to do? Let's do something together. Writing seemed like a solo project. I wasn't there yet. I don't know. But early, I was scripts. I was interested in writing scripts, and so I started, you know. Um, but this isn't about me. <laughs> what I did uh, do early, early on in my in my sort of embryonic days was, well, first I, I wrote a 500-page role-playing game because D&D was <laughs> so 10 years old. <laughs> and it didn't have enough stuff in it. <laughs> it didn't have any, it was all one genre. I was handcuffed by the, it wasn't Michelian enough for me. I wanted all of it. I wanted all the genres, and so yeah, we wrote basically a 500-page role-playing game, which we still play today. My wife out there, but um, we uh, yeah, from there we went to basically um, I, I wrote a fledgling novel. Yeah. Yes. Who submitted it? I submitted it. Oh, you submitted it. Yes. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets dark. <laughs> And, uh, and, and then, um, yeah, then I started writing screenplays. Because <laughs> I'm a quitter. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, what, what I wanted to talk about next in the Mitchellian development discussion is the, um, is the nature of time. Time is also a very fascinating subject because not only does he want the and as a conjunction instead of an or, he also wants all time available for any story. Which, which I love. It doesn't seem that much to ask, really. It's not like he's costing anyone money. <laughs> Do you know how much that would cost? It's the 
what is if time is money, after all? Uh, yeah, um, as English speakers, I think we are locked into the conceit that time is singular, just as we're locked into the conceit that intelligence is singular. There's a few others of them as well, but uh, time in particular, uh, in ways which I think if your native tongue does not have singular or plural in it, uh, then, then, then you don't, perhaps aren't, you aren't locked into thinking of time as just being one time, the way we are. Uh, I, I've long been interested in the idea that there's a plurality of time. There, that there's, there's the now. I was reading a piece in New Scientist the other day that now lasts for four seconds. That's what our brains do. That's, that's the now that our brains hold. And then we're sort of constantly on to the next now. I love that. But it, I mean, there's a whole taxonomy of time. Uh, there's, the, the, there's, there's sort of the... Whatever we're doing now, when that started, as in a scene, there's sort of scene time in life. Uh, not just in script, but in life as well. There's circadian time, which is uh, a beautiful word you didn't hear often enough in the hell of a Scrabble score if you never get it. Uh, there's, um, there's sort of the time, this sort of era, this chapter of your life. It's, it's, it's interesting how we reach for uh, labels from artistic subdivisions. There's, uh, there's chapter time as well. There's obviously lifetime. Uh, there's living memory time. Um, the last, your last chances to hear people who knew the war, uh, the, the Second World War, are just, they're, they're one by one closing up pretty quickly now. Uh, at some point, we will be the last, if we live this long, hopefully we will, but we'll be the last uh, generation that remembers the pre-internet world. We'll be like World War II veterans, sort of, in the 2030s or 2040s. 2050s, and then we'll die, and Radiohead will write a song about us. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Do you mean the Radiohead app? <laughs> write me a song, Radiohead app. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> Longer than living memory time, historical time. To the, 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 and the so much art, art is often like a subject of immortality, or is a locus of immortality in your books. You're always pointing to art as being this um, kind of, um, um, uh, the, 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 the relationship to immortality is usually metaphorically tied to art. Which I also think is interesting because all of the great villains in the Mitchell verse are either critics or <laughs> people who want to live forever. <laughs> Uh, so far, maybe, yeah, 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 that's one of those, no. <laughs> um, well, as long as they're... Personal around, hero, by the way, killing critics more than anybody else. <laughs> I've only thrown one off a balcony, and the other I incarcerated in a Colombian prison. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, I mean, good. I've gone out again after a few years, and then uh, I've told you my petty, petty revenge about negative critics sometimes. Uh, yeah. Edmund? Uh, I've, I, I'm now at, at a place where I successfully don't read my reviews uh, because uh, the bad ones hurt like hell and make you feel like shit for ages, but, and even the good ones are, are, are wasps at the picnic of the calm mind. Uh, I'm, I'm, so, I, um, I, I, I asked my agent to send me, um, I asked my agent to send me uh, the name of the news organ or the platform, uh, newspaper, magazine, website, whatever, and then to tell me if it's positive, mixed or disobliging. <laughs> if it's positive, then I'd like the name in case I meet the person and can not thank them for the review, per se, but just thank them for having noticed the book and, and, and uh, putting their reputation behind it. Uh, mixed doesn't really matter. Disobliging ones, however, I want the name. Uh, so I can slightly tweak the name. Uh, not Just enough so they can't sue me, but enough 
for them to wonder. <laughs> so, I want to do something awful to them, and uh, the cop in uh, Slade House uh, is such a tweak. Uh, it might have been really ghastly happened to them, possibly, and if the character has children, to them as well. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 it's the splinter of ice in every writer's heart. <laughs> uh, no, not really. No, I, 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 no, in fairness, I do leave the kids out of it. Uh, but, 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 but I'm not above the odd pet attack, is it? Uh, uh, and then you never say what you've done in public, so they will go to their graves not knowing if you've jinxed them in the worst possible way or not. Um, it's petty, but it makes me feel better. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's, so that's the physics. Um, antagonists 